Welcome back to A Little Market Insight. I'm your host, Justin Little. Thank you so much for joining us. This week, we are going to be going on the road with Dynamic Heating and Cooling, where we will be talking all about heat pumps as well. We're going to be sitting down with Mike from Viral Realtors. He's a home photographer. He's going to be talking all about preparing your home for photos when we are about to list it. But first, I am joined by Frank Salvatore from Remax Escarpment. Frank, thank you so much for coming in today. Thanks for having me. I want to have you on because besides being probably the best dressed man in real estate, <laughs> you, uh, you're, too kind. <laughs> you, you're very successful in residential, but you're also very successful in, which I, I'd, I'd almost want to call it a niche market because I'd say probably less than 5% of realtors, maybe even fewer, can actually successfully transact commercial real estate. And you've been doing commercial real estate for years and years. I know that you've put together some major deals as well in your history. So I figured who better to have on the show than the legend himself. So thanks. Let's dive into it. So when it comes to commercial real estate versus residential, what would you say is the biggest misconception of people that are looking to buy commercial real estate when they've never done it before? I think one of the biggest misconceptions is, is that everybody thinks that you have to be extremely wealthy in order to purchase commercial real estate. And the other misconception is, is you know, trying to get financing. Uh, typically, you need 30 to 40 percent down to purchase financing, and, and that's a big shocker uh, price for a lot of people to come up with. But if you look at the creative ways of doing it, not all the down payment has to come from the actual buyer. What we can sometimes do is, well, typically lenders will lend up to about 60% loan to value, possibly even 65%, or maybe even up to 70% if it's like a mixed-use property. And if the, the buyer has, say, about 10% down, sometimes you can bridge that gap by going to the actual seller and asking them to kick in a 20% uh, VTB or lender, uh, lender back financing. And that's how we can usually get those deals done. Mm -hmm. And now you said some terms. Let's just break down some of these terms because I think a lot of people might not know it. Like mixed use. What would mixed use be? Mixed use would be a combination of residential and commercial. So okay. you, you'll see, you know, uh, here in Hamilton alone, you'll have a, a commercial unit. For example, I have one just on King Street West right now where you have a um, commercial storefront and then two residential units above. Mm -hmm. And I find mixed use sometimes... And I might be wrong, does, would it better protect you from market slides because if commercial is down, you're at least collecting rent upstairs. If there's something going on with residential, at least your commercial tenant's strong. Absolutely. It's a good way to mitigate it. If you diversify that way, I think it's you know very knowledgeable and, um, and a good way to go. It, it mitigates your risks. So mm -hmm. for sure, mixing that with residential and commercial is, is always ideal. Since COVID, how have you seen the commercial landscape change in Hamilton? It's changed quite considerably actually um, office space has really um, you know fallen off the charts if you will uh, I just received an email this morning as a matter of fact uh, they're doing a, um, a conference on how to convert office space into residential space so we're seeing more and more of that right now if you look at downtown Toronto and I would even say here in Hamilton Hamilton has 220 listings that are just office space wow. that are up yeah. for lease um, and or sale. In Toronto, it's about 19% vacancy where you usually want to see somewhere between about 10 and 12% vacancy for office space. So we're sitting here with all this space, not really knowing what to do with it. However, if the governments, municipalities, what have you, get together with you know, developers mm -hmm. and they can do something very positive, we have a huge housing crisis, so why not fill that gap? Yeah, because the, the structures are already there, right? I guess, I mean, for the developer, they'd have to go in and figure out all the plumbing and all that. But I mean, the of space course. is there, right? And it's just a conversion, which, uh, which would be good. And do you think the city would be receptive to stuff like that? or? I think they are and they have been and I think there's um, some great discussions that are happening now with developers and city council members. Um, I, you know, I couldn't give you specific details, but uh, mm. the word on the street there is that they're definitely looking into the space and seeing how they could transform it. That's great. So you do think that we'll likely see some more office conversions into residential or some other type of 
commercial space moving forward? Absolutely. I think it's just a matter of time, and I, I'm sure there's there's people planning this as we speak right now. Yeah, because who wants to go in the office anymore? Exactly. Right? Exactly. <laughs> Everybody except, wants to work from home now. Except they for want, me. Yeah, that's, I know you're in there every day. They want to be like me, working in a t-shirt yeah, at no home kidding. there. Uh, so uh, what type of commercial real estate is really taking off since COVID? What I found, so I, I primarily do a lot of industrial real estate and, and that seems to be my, my niche market. Although I have mixed use properties and commercial plazas and things like that that I've sold in the past, um, the industrial sector has really exploded. I would say prior to COVID, they were hovering around $8 to $10 a square foot plus your TMI, which is your taxes, maintenance and insurance. And now, you know, showing these same properties the landlords are asking $14, $16 a square foot plus your taxes, maintenance and insurance. Yeah. So that income potential has dramatically gone up. Plus the price per square foot has gone up. Like, I mean, we were able to build industrial buildings for about 100 to $150 a square foot. And now, um, you know, they're selling close to $300 a square foot. Jeez. So that is a huge market. There's a lot of manufacturing here mm -hmm. um, that has come back to Canada, which is very, very good. And I think that has helped push those values up. Yeah, and in Hamilton specifically, we've always had that big manufacturing sort of banner above us, I feel like, right? Exactly. But what, so what would you define as an industrial property? Like to give an example. An industrial property would be, you know, something that could be used for warehousing, um, or manufacturing. Um, I have a client that took an old uh, 35, 36,000 square foot facility that was just primarily used for light manufacturing and turned it into a commercial bakery. Oh, wow. um, so there's multiple different things that you can do there. I currently have a client right now that you know is in the hunt for about uh, 25,000 square feet for a machine shop, but they need cranes. Mm. Right. So there's there's many different aspects of industrial. And do you think there's a room for investors in industrial or is it mostly you think owner use? Um, there are some groups out there and that's where it can get really creative. If you can get, you know, five or six investors together and pool their money to purchase industrial properties, that could be very, very lucrative. You don't have to go it alone. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody thinks, well, I'll do it when I win the lottery or yeah. I'll do it when I inherit some money. Um, do it now. Like, I mean, talk to your accountant, talk to your lawyer, talk to your financial planner, talk to a professional seasoned commercial realtor, and they can help put those things together mm -hmm. for you. And that's the big thing, I think, working with an agent that does commercial real estate specifically, right? Because then you also have access to a lot of those lawyers' accounts, and you might even have access to other investor pools that they might not be aware of, right? Absolutely. Solutions like that. So, if somebody is looking to get into it, what are some of the first steps they should take if they want to start purchasing commercial real estate? Well, that reflects back on similarly what I've said before. If you if you get in touch with your financial planner, um, you know, lawyer, uh, seasoned commercial realtor, I think those would be the first steps. Sit down with a qualified commercial realtor first. Let them know what your ambitions are, and then they can help pave the way as to you know where you should go. Financing is also important as well too. Uh, many people don't know I'm also a mortgage broker as well and we have a lot of commercial lenders that will assist and you know depending on the type of product I know where I could lean that client towards for the best rates and terms. Mm -hmm. So you're one stop shop for it. Exactly. It's perfect. Yeah. It's yeah. smart. That's a really good idea to yeah. you know because like you said the financing can sometimes be tricky but you being involved in both aspects of it kind of smooths it along. Right. So what, if you had to give some advice to somebody that was starting out, I know we talked about the first steps to do it, but if you had to just give some general advice to somebody looking to break into the commercial real estate world, what would that be? The best advice I could give people is don't hesitate. You don't necessarily have to have every single duck in the row. You know, if, if you're thinking about it, talk to the right people, start implementing your strategies right away. And, um, you know, look at what's in your bank account, where you can find money. Sometimes you already have property that is free and clear of a mortgage or you have tremendous equity in your existing home. You can use some of that equity as a down payment for another property. So I say don't hesitate. Yeah, don't hesitate because the one thing, what is it? Don't wait and buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. Exactly. That's the old saying, exactly. right? Because even, you know, you're talking about the price per square foot, how much they've gone up right. and all that, the cost to build, the resale and all that. So that is incredibly great insight. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I think you've inspired me to start 
looking into purchasing some commercial real estate. We'll book you an appointment <laughs> next week. Sounds great. Thanks, Frank, for coming on. I appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Next week or uh, next up, we are going on the road with Dynamic Heating and Cooling, where we are going to be talking all about heat pumps.